Welcome to a special presentation today with Brent Schlenker demonstrating some tips and techniques on the Norvice. Brent has been tying flies for over three decades and enjoys sharing his experience with others. Brent and his wife Diane have enjoyed fly fishing their favorite waters and meeting some great folks during fly shows, along with their guiding company and fly shop. Brent has designed some effective and durable flies. Let's go to the bench. Oh, well, good day, and uh, thanks for joining us today, folks, um, on the Norvice. We'll be uh, working here just to show you some of the techniques, um, some of the basics, I guess, of the Norvice. It's going to be really hard to cramp everything in in a short period of time, but we're going to go over some of the techniques. Uh, it's still going to take a bit of time, so make sure you're comfortable, and uh, we'll get to it. We're going to start uh, the woolly buggers a pattern here that the Norvice just you know, love tying on it. Uh, it creates such a nice reinforced body. I'll just show you that all in a minute here. We're not going to be tying any specific patterns. We're going to be uh, basically showing you some techniques and uh, what the Norvice is capable of doing. And then there's lots that I won't be able to get time for. We'll probably have to do another one later on. If we have enough interest, you just uh, call back and and we'll be more than happy to accommodate you. Any of your requests. I know we had a lot of people and Don said they're interested in this so it's really nice to address the shank of the hook. Um, you want to lead your bodies it works really easy for that as well. The um, chenille we use a lot or a lot of tires like using a lot of chenilles. We start with that. I'm going to uh, just tie that in by the core. I'll get rid of some of this flash that found its way in here to the to my mess. Okay, so what I'm doing is I keep my scissors in my tying hand, also my bobbin, pretty much all times. I use a tying uh, post, a thread post when needed. So all I do is I take my thread ahead of the, uh, the chenille as I'm wrapping forward and just tie it off. Okay, that's pretty easily done. So, makes a nice uh, even body, quick and painless. Okay, get another big hook in the vise here, another size two, just for easy demonstration. Where's my lead? Okay, let's go do the show you the lead. Really easy. Just what I would do then of letting if when I'm getting ready to do a bunch of flies, I I let my bodies first, stick it in oh sorry, stick it in the uh eye lead here and then just get it started. As far as you want to go back, pull it off, snip that off with your thumb and that's pretty simple. Easy and painless. Okay, now I'm gonna put some uh, wire at the rear of this one. Grab some other. Of course, I had to set my bobbin down. I lost my. I'm going to use red wire here. I'll just get that wrapped around here for you. It's going to be wrapped around the post, your, your side of your bobbin one time, just so it uh, feeds properly, so it hangs. Make sure the worms aren't touching the spool. That'll be a spring loader bobbin over the top. It didn't take you long to cover up your thread if you want or put a dam in behind it. Come in, bring in some wire. I use the thread or the uh, material clip at the back here, right on the hub. Found that very handy. Start here with the schneel to rear again. Let's go forward. it off and uh, hit some a little a hackle here tie that in 45 the front go to the thread post at that point 
Then you can wrap as tight as you want going back. Make sure you don't get caught in the hook going. And now we just keep turning the same way, the same distance apart. Got a bulletproof fly right there, very densely hackled, lots of wire over it. That to me is one of the best features of the Norvice. It does create very, very strong bodies, very durable flies. And the dubbing we'll get to in a minute, but nicely done, very easily. Manipulated there, work with some of that. Another uh, neat little deal you can do with uh, some of your chenilles. Let's come in here with a black and a yellow, nice contrast. Another good thing about working with chenilles on your Norway's too, you never have to cut it off. You just keep working off the the uh, spool or your hand or whatever else. You don't have to, you don't waste any at all. Okay, I got to make sure I got those tied in good. Black and yellow just for the demo. Wrap that forward. Oh. Wrap it left or right. Not going to matter too much with the the, the chenilles, which direction you go, but it will later. I'm going to go over that when we do brushes. And when you go to tie that off, seeing I got my thread way up here, I can just tie it off. I just run it back, tie it off, cut it at an angle here, and you've got a nice variegated body. And really looks nice with thin chenilles too. You can go all different sizes. Really good for stone flies or anything you want a little mottled coloration. You can make your own variegated uh, chenilles. Okay, I'll get that out of the way. Now another uh, uh, interesting product we work with a lot is uh, some of this new stuff we're getting to see is this Fritz. And longer uh, fibers, uh, these longer chenilles, polar chenilles, and those type of things. So when you go to wrap them, I'll just show you with the Fritz here. Quite a popular material. It's kind of laying back this way. That's the way you want to tie it in, okay? Don't go against the grain. I'm just going to use part of this hook for the demo. Okay, tie in your core. Wrap the core in there. Put the thread ahead again. Now you want to get close and it should come right out of your fingers as you wrap forward. See I'm getting it. It's wanting to go forward and it's going to lay over itself. Make sure you keep your fingers close to the material and then it'll wrap nice and even on there for you. And just tie it off. And always lay my scissors along the side. So I don't cut anything, but you see how nice that lays it down. If you do it the other way, I'll just show you with this other color. If you kind of stay away from the material a little bit, it'll pitch itself down. Let's see when I go to wrap, it's not doing the same. It's kind of going over itself a little bit there. See how it's wanting to go ahead and be a little unmanageable. Okay. Or you can pull it back all the time, but the, the speed of the vise is what you want. But but you tying them quick is not the the, the end game here. You want to make sure that your materials are laying properly on your on your hook. Okay, so that that creates a pretty nice body. Nothing snagged down on it. All right, so we'll move right along here. Well, um, let's go look at a. Um, Stretchy body here. Nope. Put in a curved shank hook. Make sure you get the axis on the right spot. I'll just start here with this E dot olive.
I'm going to also add some red wire. Get this all back in my material clip. Tie it down nice and snug. So now I think we could do, let's get some of our um, washaboo here. Say for a glimmer midge. Just do a nice bright underbody with a with the flashaboo. Gonna make a bit of a taper with it. That helps me with. I could put a bead on there if you like, whatever gills and all that other stuff. I don't like the hook pointing down. I want it I kind of straight out. So then I'll just take the wire, stretch floss together. Nice even turns. Every turn's the same. It's all about the angle. You're holding your materials. There's the space you're going to get. I would really suggest not worrying about a lot of patterns right away, even if you cut the materials off a little bit. Just go through some exercises like this and see what your little vise will do for you. But that creates a really nice, even body, quick, simple. Okay, now another body I'd really like to show you is the, um, one of my favorite materials is Peacock Curl. Trouble with Peacock Curl, it is very fragile. Make sure you get your hook spinning nice and even. There you go. It'll do what it's made to do. I'll put some uh, red wire on the back here. I'm going to reinforce it even more. We're going to do a peacock curl rope. This will be done for many different kinds of flies when using peacock curl. I'll bring in some, uh, I always tie it in by the tips. rear here we'll do that you pull it it bugs it out tie it in by the butts when you work with it, it actually flattens it out so I'm, now when I'm turning I tie clockwise okay I tie clockwise I want to wrap everything counterclockwise clockwise counterclockwise we'll see in a minute why I broke my broke this off okay Not give up, we'll just keep working here. <laughs> we'll never give up. Put another half hitch in. Bug it out. Counterclockwise. When I start wrapping, you're going to see this one to fall into place and stays tight. You know, when you are wrapping or dubbing, uh, dubbing on a thread and it gets looser as you go along, it's because you're turn it the wrong direction. Try spinning it on the other way and it'll stay tight. Tie that off just so we don't lose it with a half hitch. And this other spacing is how you angle your thread or your wire. And that gives a beautiful little body there. I really got it wrapped. Lots of wire really tight. You can space it out wider than that if you like. It's a matter of choice. And you could have run a hackle over that and then run the wire over it. So, nice strong peacock curl body. Very popular. Okay, I'll clean off my mess here a little bit. Now, what do we want to do now? Let's go talk about dubbing. This is what the Norweys is. When I seen the video that Norm Norlander sent me years ago, I seen this advertised in a Fly Fisherman magazine and tie, tie better flies faster. Remember that? And free DVD. I got it and uh, 
boy, I didn't watch it very long, and I had one on order. It was just, I love the way it dubbed. That was what sold me on it, for sure. And the way you can do buggy, uh, buggy bodies, you know, and, and uh, well, here's one of the worst materials, or the hardest materials in dub, and that's seal fur. I wish I'd have used, oh, I got some pink. Yes, I do. Because I got the blue background, you're not going to see it so good. Let's go with hot pink. And if it comes out of the bag, sometimes it's dubbing. It's it's not blended the way I like, so I got a little coffee bean grinder at the end of my tie-in desk all the time. And I just fluff that all up. And it uh, really helps with your dubbing, too. It's going to blend. It's going to look a lot better. Okay. Just another little tip for you. So you know, it's really nice and fluffy. Okay. How about if we would find ourselves... Mylar. Well, here's some blue on one side here. Copper on one side, blue on the other. Just put that on there to make this look a little more interesting. Half itch. Get my dubbing in my hand. It all happens in there. Pinch it between the thread and the hook. And you can come out as see how much when you feed it lots lots goes on right and you can thin that down a little bit too I can get that way thinner I'll just show you that first before I put it on same material just by feeding it out being stingy when you feed it look how thin I can go with it that's seal fur you can't do that any other way that just looks so good so let's go back here Get the smiler out of the way. Make sure you watch your thread or your point of your your uh, hook there. Okay. Now I'm gonna let's do something else here. I'm just gonna run that uh, blue up. Interesting. It's pretty wide, right? It doesn't look right there at all. I'm just going to take that off. I should have had something better for you. Did you get the drift? Okay, now, if I wanted a nice heavy collar, the seal fur, I can just pin a big heavy collar on there like that. And I can brush that out. So that's just a dubbed seal. And of course, you can go really buggy dubbing for salmon flies or whatever your purpose, whatever you're doing. Okay. Get, I just want to show you some of the different characteristics of some of those different dubbing. There is dubbing is just, I could probably sit here all day with you just on dubbing alone. Let's, uh, let's do a, a really nice little hair's ear type fly. My black I shouldn't might show through a little bit. See, it's not level. Make sure you're always level. It spins really nice and even. I'll just take some of this real small little mylar. Could have got away with that in my last fly, actually. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to get the hairs here. This is hairs here plus antron. Really nice and bright. I'm going to taper that out. I'm going to get, look how that's coming off. Look at the fibers going onto the thread. It's a spinning wheel. This builds beautiful nymphs. And I had trouble with my nymphs when I started tying flies. I was, they look so easy and boy was I messing them up bad. So look at the nice way you can do a, a Really nice tapered body with them. Wherever you stop, throw in a half hitch. And then you go through here with a, some ribbing. Holographic, that looks really nice. So you can 
Let's leave it just like that. Nice and buggy. I'll show you translucent. Fly a little later. And so I'll throw another half hitch on there. What do we need? We'd like to put a little something bright and a little bit of a bit of a collar on that. Let's bring in some of this custom dubbing here. It's really spiky. I've done this, made this myself. But it's really, really spiky. And I can put it on just like that. That just dubbed on. I'm going to show you another couple of techniques in a minute here, okay? With the dubbing brushes. And you'll also want yourself a little wire brush. Also a toothbrush on some of the small ones is good. I'd brush them back. Makes a beautiful little nymph right there. Okay. Now, what about dry flies? The nice little dry flies. Grab me a little thinner thread. I got an eight on it. That was a six. So I'll come right in here. Run my thread base right down to the tie-in point. Put my tail on there. And I'll come in. Let's use some bright colored. This is just straight Antron. We use that a lot for dry flies. Very fine as you can see. You can barely see that. Just catch that in between and look how that oh my god. So a little hair there. Okay. Look how that just barely covering that thread. So nice and thin for small little dry flies. The fibers are coming off the side of the thread. Just beautiful. That that gives it the effect we're looking for right there. You can always just tie it off just like so. Okay. Put a rib on that, whatever you want to do, extra fine wire, put a little rib on that. There you go. Okay, now we want to uh, show you, let's see, a dubbing collar. So the way I just dubbed that on automatic last time. Time. I'm just going to come in with some really extra fine my small wire. Here it is. And I, I do a lot of flies like this. I think what I should do is do it on a little bigger one. It's just going to be much easier for you to see. Let's do it on this larger hook. Okay. Give me a chance to show you another body, maybe. Throw a half hitch in there. What else can we do for a body? Let's put in some red wire. we go. Here's some of this Ligus. This is a translucent uh, dubbing here. It's got lots of antron in it. Bobbin just hanging out of my fingers. Put this on. I'm going to put this on a little thicker for a nymph. Put it on, see, you can get a nice taper going there. Just put it where you want it. So nice. And let me just follow up with my little wider rib. Then I need a wire brush. That's going to be get a little aggressive on that. So I use my toothbrush. 
on the small flies. But you'll see when that gets wet, that is a really nice iridescent fly or a translucent fly. That's just perfect. I'm going to throw in a little extra fine wire at the front here. Half inch. And we're going to do ourselves a nice collar. There's one that kind of almost goes with it. Rock chuck seal. And that you can go with dubbing loops all you want, but here you go. And I turn it till the wire, I can feel the wire wanting to turn on my hand till it's tight. And I'll take anything out of there that's not holding and just preen it back as I go forward and tie it off. Make sure you don't cut anything you don't want off there. Do a lot of my own dubbings too. Like you see, I got a rock chuck and olive seal and brown ice, golden seal, olive seal. <laughs> I got I like doing the blends. You can get some really, really cool different blends and different textures. And but isn't that a nice color? Put a real dark one on too, but that those slides are pretty hard you can do them on a on a standard vice there's a lot of beautiful flies tied on a standard vice too but i just i can't say enough about this little vice works good for me and uh okay so what are we down to let's got some dry flies let's do some brushes Okay, now I'm going to come in with the same size hook. I'm going to do basically the same fly we did last, just a minute ago. This one we're going to do... Let me get my other thread on here, the 6 aught. I'll spin this thread on. Here. Get started on here. Just a shank. This is... Uh, Fine wire or, or small, I should say. Okay, gives it a little bit more length involved here. Throw a half hitch on. I'm going to need some dubbing wax. Here we go. Bring in my bobbin or my uh, dubbing table. It's adjustable. And you can make these if you want. Make sure you, if you do, put some felt or leather on top just to hold the materials all in place. So let's bring in some squirrel hide, some scud, sow scud. Dubbing. And we'll make a little cool little nymph. I'm just going to lay that sow scud across. Here and you see how long those fibers are. Very translucent. Again, these are very specialized dubbings. It's really going to get it hard to do with. This is really a slick deal. Now let's come in here with a uh, some of this squirrel. I'm going to cut that off the hide. Take some of that under fur out. Put it on the front. A little more, just a little more on there. And they, when they have that felt on there, you can actually spread it out a little bit and it'll stay. So, the more important thing to get it to kind of stay where it belongs is put some wax on your wire. Hope I didn't try to go too scotch and shorten up on the wire. Yeah, I didn't. I don't have, I got about a quarter inch to spare. We just made it. Pinch that wire and the thread together tight. Counterclockwise again. Oh. I think my yeah my wire broke there. Yeah. I'm just going to uh, attach it on there. See, I caught it on the 
hook again. I can feel it wanting to get tight in my holding hand here. I'm done. Okay. I'm just going to take this wire to the rear. Or you could cut it off and reattach it. But I'm just going to take it to the rear like this. Like so. Okay. Get, my, get that out of the way so you can see. Now I can wrap forward. You see how it wants to lay in naturally. Really buggy. <laughs> I'm going to do another one here in a minute. But I'm going to... Show you how buggy you can get some of these flies. You want to go that way. You can just wrap that whole thorax or that collar on there with your squirrel and the wire. It's very, very strong. I'm going to do the same one. It's a little thinner this time. I'll just show you the difference. How you can do that. Let's go get ourselves a brush. Want a very, very buggy, translucent type body. There you go. Give me another one of them hooks. This time I'm coming in a small wire. That was a little too fine. What I was doing there. It's broke. Tie this wire along the shank. This won't break. My bob, bring my table in again. Okay, let's use the same material just to show you the difference. Some on the tying table here for the dubbing table. Let's lay it across. Okay, get me another little clip uh, here. Nice, I like how those markings on those. I'm going to shorten that hair up. Dubbing wax. We're going to see a little different magic. Hope it's magic, not a wreck. The dubbing wax will allow you to keep everything sticking to it. Get those butts in there a little bit more. You can push them in there if you want. Reverse wrap. Now I'm going to get a lot more heat on this one because I've got heavier wire. So the wire matters. So you can see the wire and see the really nice texture of that brush. I just, I just come around, I just eat that wire around the shank of the hook as I go back. And once my wire appears, just watch it how it wants to roll on. Okay, it's too long. I got too much. Tie it off right there. You're going to get onto this where you can actually figure out how much to put on. Usually I can get it right where I want it and do it all in one swoop. Get my little dubbing player on there or my hackle pliers. Wrap my Nice little collar. Pull it back out of the way. Put yourself a on your hackle uh, your whip finish. Take that down. Okay, let's go in here. Let's see now I got big wire. I can bring my wire brush in here and scrape on that all day long. It will not get damaged. Never. Never get fear, but look at the length of that fiber. It's really long. That is not the fiber I'd use for a nymph, but this is, we're not done yet. Clear scissors along the shank and 
trim that down. You're going to have a whole new... This fly is really going to look in the water. You, you could change the color of that wire to give you a different effect. But now you see what we have there. Really, it looks almost like a touch dubbing or something. You could also put a little color dubbing in underneath. Just put a little spot of that in there on your dubbing. You can blend different colors. Okay. Speaking of which, I'm going to go in here with the um, another great uh, material I use a lot on these dubbing tables is rabbit. Do some more brushes with the rabbit. Okay, let's get some colors. Let's go with uh, three colors. Why not? Just to show it. You can get cross-cut rabbit strips, usually what I use. I just grab what I had real quick here. These are magnum strips. You can use straight rabbit strips. You don't have to use magnums. Okay, now, better get her thread here. And where we go? We've got one, one time around the bobbin frame. Professor Shank, small wire, I've done a lot of these enticer type flies over the years, they are just absolute bomb proof, we've never had one fall apart, there's never, it's no possibility they could. Okay, let's bring in some uh, purple rabbit. Let me pinch that off. I, I like doing these. Some, you know, a lot of guys are wrapping the uh, the hide and everything on their flies, right? I can put a lot more hair on removing, taking that hide out of the equation. Okay, now I'll take bring some pink, purple, and pink. What's wrong with that color? I cut it. Now there's going to be. Quite a bit of under fur in here. A lot of times I like to pull some of that out. That just you get a better spin on it. You, get, you want that guard here. Now let's throw in a little bit of something, make it interesting. We'll put a little collar of chartreuse on the front. Spread that out. You can put a little flash in there if you want. I'm just going to want my wax again. Don't forget the wax. Make sure your wire is always tied in good too. Sometimes doubling over itself helps a lot. Come right over top of the wire and the thread. Reverse wrap. Counterclockwise, go the opposite way you wrap your materials. I tie clockwise, it's kind of weird the way I do, but when I got my first fly tying kit, I had a Thompson uh, whip finish. And the only way you could whip finish with one of them is if you went clockwise. So I had to learn how to tie backwards, and here I am, still backwards. <laughs> but just watch this go on by itself. Nice and strong. Myself a little whip finish on there. Now with this I could bring in a bodkin needle if I like. You can bring in a chainsaw if you want. This, this is not coming apart. This, these flies are, they look pretty fragile and they got a ton of movement. Those enticer flies of mine have caught so many fish and they're the most under, that's some underrated fly. 
if you ask me. So simple, nobody ties it or fishes it. What I sure do, and a lot of my buddies do. And I've tied these originally for trout in different trout colors. But put a tail on it too with rabbit. And then a body with uh, ice dub is what I was doing. You can put all kinds of bodies, different sizes, you know, change it all out. But that fly totally breathes in the water. You don't have to move it. It just constantly breathes and it's it uh, really, really works on stubborn fish. I had a guy, you know, I don't want to start sit here and tell you a bunch of stories, but it, it's out fish. It was just amazing in so many different situations. So that's just a rabbit rabbit brush. Let's do a bigger brush for you pike and salmon and steel hitters and saltwater guys. I'm going to bring in uh, uh, that's three, six ought to work. Probably go to three ought when you're working with something this big. Dress the shank. Get a nice long chunk of wire here on this one. Always put the half hitch where the thread and the wire start together. I had a longer dubbing table I made myself or had a welder make it out of metal and use it on my uh, pedestal. Um, my device had a little pedestal on it and I just stuck it in there and worked pretty good. I give that to my buddy Dale. Okay, let's come in here with some really good material. I like using this stuff for big flies. This craft fur. Here again, let's Bring in a little pinch of this purple. Put a little bit of we'll go with the same color combos. A little pink. You can lay that in there. There's a little under fur in this stuff too if you want to take it out and that's good too. Get a little different effect when you leave it in. I'm going to pull this stuff out. And I use the under fur. Bag that. Keep it. Makes good dubbing. You'll find a place you can mix that up. Get yourself a little coffee bean grinder like I got there. and Boy. I'm just put a little of that I got some orange sitting here just looking at me. It looks pretty nice. I'm going to put that on too. Take the under fur out. I'm going to fill that table up. <clears throat> Here's a product like ice. Ice wing. Put a lot of that in there. And in the front, we'll just bring in some polar wind here. This really nice bright. It's pretty long, so I'm going to nip that off. Also, it's going to get all tangled up. And there you go. Just to kind of give you a bit of an idea. You know, and I better put some more wax on there just so it doesn't fall apart. Be safe. So as you get it to that point, then you pull it over and it all falls apart on you before you get to spin it. That, that is not good. Make sure your wire and your thread are pinched together good. Start it slow. Not quite tight yet. I'm going to bring my big nylon brush in this one here. With just a big household cleaning brush. Snarf that off my wife years ago. She's still looking for it. I'll tell her someday <laughs> where it is. But isn't that a find a lot of uses for a brush like that. Now you can make these brushes up and then just tie them, put them on your patterns later too, right? You don't have to 
to uh, use them like I am right here. But if I was to oh, whack my camera, if I was to wind it forward, I would be taking my time and preening it back. And do that on the next fly when I'm going to show you some hair hackling. And then, uh, so it's, uh, I could spin the brush, or the, uh, the lace and really try to make myself look like a hero, but it's, uh, just, just work with it. That, anything gets pinched down, you can pull it out. It's going to come out fine. But you'll see it's. It's a really durable, durable fly. Uh, material, you know what brushes are. They can, they sell these in bags. They're very expensive. You can make a ton of them on here. Whatever brushes you want, you can actually put another hub on the front. If you do a lot of brushes, you can get a center hub with a just a ring on there, and then just use wire all the way through. You don't use any thread at all. You want to make just straight brushes, and you can make them for. Just the small ones with, uh, say, the squirrel or whatever else you want on for collars, for flies, whatever. You got no, you know, use your imagination. There's the sky's the limit. You know, I found a lot of different things I did with my vice, and you're going to find the same thing with you. Yours are just going to, wow, where, why didn't I think of that later? Or here's some, just some uh, great ideas. You'll come up with lots. It's fun tying on here. So there it is. Now there's a you know the finished um, fly there with the um, craft fur, and I you know like I say I've used this so much for salt water and steelhead and whatever like you know pike whatever. It just makes a beautiful beautiful body, and uh, look at all the colorations in there. So hope that uh, helps you with that, and uh, that'll. Kind of get you thinking about some different bugs for sure. I want to uh, show you now one more of those. I'm going to go on a little, do I have a smaller? Oh, I got one of these left. No, I want to use this. I'll just grab a salmon flyer hook. I just grabbed some random hooks here. Tying different patterns, let everything all match and ready to go for you. But okay, let's say we're gonna do um, a leech, something like that. We'll grab a um, my mylar. Go we'll forward here. When you want to do a mylar body, for example, I'm going to go to the thread post for that. You can go back and then back for itself. It just really, really works good. It's got a, such a nice, smooth, clean job on it, right? Just wanted to show you that. Another really nice, easy, makes things very, very easy. Okay, now I want to uh, I'll go with this small wire again make sure that thread is tied or that wire is tied back so it stays in so you want to come out we show you that tie it in tie it back it won't move okay half itch bring your thread your, your dubbing table in now I should have some of my, uh, well, here's some semi seal, that's what I wanted. Here we're going to do some dubbing, uh, tackling with dumb, uh, dubbing. So 
So you come out here, these fibers, I pinch it off and I just, I want to get these fibers coming out straight. Take it nice and thin. There's some there. I'm going to take, I'm going to grab some other longer material just so you can see it. I'll grab some of this African goat. It's a nice long fiber as well. You can even blend that in a little bit. Lay it on top. This is going to be okay. It's not too slippery. We're putting it in the middle. Should stay just fine without the wax. Once I get tight, I stop. Bring in my heavy brush. You can get really aggressive on this. I'll just take the wire to the rear. I'm just going to reinforce my my lures will go back and then bring these fibers back as I go and you can just hackle that. I'm sure you can see some opportunities coming up here with that too. You steelhead guys are licking your lips about now, eh? And you can, I do leech bodies like that. What a time all my leeches like. Works really good. Tie that off into your wings or whatever kind of wings you want to get, use. Don't be worried about getting your vodka needle involved here or whatever. A lot of times what I'll do is I just brush everything forward and come back. Isn't that nice? That makes just a beautiful color. There's this little spade fly right there for you. Simple. There, love it. Okay, what else we got? Hope we got a little time left. Could we run a little long for you people? I got to show you. I want to show you a cool way I do some. Uh, bodies for streamers okay and get me another one of these you know what i'm just gonna go with the salmon hook again because i got them sitting right there red here's some floss you get it on a bobbin when you're dealing with floss it can get kind of wound around itself you gotta loosen up your counterclockwise all your bobbins and so forth I'm just gonna leave this coming off free spool okay and then I can feel that off by hand I get myself a little bit of a taper going I'm not too worried that that taper is not just 112 percent. I want the basic shape of my minnow. Come in here with some nice mylar. Could have a little heavier mylar than what I've found here. Maybe a salt water type of mylar would be good. Go to my thread post. back and give it a good pull you can pull on this stuff and I love that underbody it looks really good in the water go different colors but that pink one right there is one of my favorites if 
finish it off your wing and your throat and so forth, but really nice, really nice bright body there. That's a, a good one. One more of that before we sign off. I could keep going on. There's more stuff we can do. Like I said, if we want some point, maybe we can do another another one of these. Okay, I want to um, get some silver. The back. For my rib. And I'm I don't know why I've got the black in my hand. I prefer to have this. Brighter color underneath it. Okay. Senos. Laser dub, where'd you go? Got some here laying on my desk. Might be a little, a few little dirty things in there, but we'll use it anyway. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on. Well, there's some black, something rather in there. Oh, that's some flash. I'm just gonna go on there really pretty coarse, pretty coarse of this. A little bit of a taper going there, but. And I'll just tie that off right there and pull us out again. I should have got some clean stuff out of my bag, but I couldn't see the bag in front of me. Oh, here it is, right over my other side of me. It was on the exit side, not the entrance. Taking all my stuff on my other side that I've already tied with. Okay, now I can... I don't have to go to my thread post, I'm just going to, I tied that off, so I'm just going to leave my thread in my hand, and then come in here with my ribbing, and I want my rib pretty wide on this. I've used the under fur from uh, Polar Bear, too, for this style, and boy, that looks really good. It takes a little, it's really coarse to work with. Boy, it looks good. For smaller flies, the Senyo's Laser Dub works really, really nice. Now here, I gotta get my little tough war brush. And we're gonna go to work on this a little bit. We're gonna really rough this one up. See those nice smooth little fibers coming out of there? And you have to see this when it's wet to really appreciate what we got. Because all that you can see how they can see that ribbing under there. That's fine. If you want to leave it like that, go for it. But I like it all brushed out. Okay. Just brush again. Preen it all back. And for smaller streamers, I just love that body. It looks so good when it's wet. And that's really important, I would say, when you're tying flies or you come up with one of your own patterns you think it really looks good i've had this happen to me many many times where boy i've had some flies in the vice they just look awesome i thought thought i got a winner and then you take it to the water and it's a complete failure it just doesn't swim right or the materials look you know that just it doesn't do the job it just takes its trial and error see how these materials react in the water and the styles you get to but when you get something that works, don't change it. Like I say, this translucency in any kind of body for small limps to big flies, whatever, I'm sold on it. Uh, it's one of my proponents. I like a lot of my hooks. Uh, my my flies that I design or use, it's quite critical. And many other patterns come that are not translucent, but, you know, but solid bodies. There's so many flies we could talk here all two days about flies, couldn't we? So... All I'd like to say is I appreciate your time today, folks, and I hope this helped a little bit, and uh, I know we had a lot of inquiries, so that didn't answer any of your questions. 
please feel free to reach out to Dawn again and uh, make sure you check back at our website. We'll have some new flies on uh, online there too. I'm working on them this winter. So thanks again. I really appreciate your support. We appreciate you visiting us today and would like to thank Brent for this informative demonstration. Should you have any questions, comments, or have suggestions for other demos, please contact us at Sport Fishing on the Fly. See you soon.